on, something, come on. Swing and a miss. There's a lot of fun. Don't throw it. Wow. 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 Unbelievable. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this production of the Cross-Platform Baseball League, the XBL World Series Games 3 and 4 coming at you, and my name is Dwayne. I'm going to be bringing you the play-by-play -play commentary, and in me, or with me, in the booth, is Mike the Cooch. We got him back uh, for this for these games. It's going to be big ones, man. Huge ones. Glad to be back, and yeah, I watched the uh, first two games. They were exciting, so I'm, I'm excited for more. Yeah, absolutely. Two close games, as it would stand uh, in, these, in this series between Weaver for Prez and Lazy. Uh, games one and two the other night, or just last night, uh, game one finishing at a score of one to nothing, a bit out of the ordinary for both these players, known for their scoring, uh, but also known for their pitching. So, you know, you figured it would be tight, but a one to nothing game to start off a World Series was some intense stuff, you know, and Lazy coming on the winning end of both sides of these games, that, that one one to nothing, the game two, eight to four, uh, where he did have a little bit of a bigger inning towards the end and get ahead there. And, uh, and Weaver showed that he was going to stay in it for a little bit, but he just couldn't quite push itself uh, over the top. Unreal to keep either of these guys to zero runs or even one run, to be honest with you. So the first game was kind of unbelievable. Uh, and then game two, uh, Weaver tried to make it close. But I think that uh, we, we had a little side interview after the game with uh, young Weaver. And that, that little uh, lag gaff out in right field just really screwed up his mental. So we'll see if uh, hopefully that doesn't happen again. Yeah, absolutely. That was tough to give up a few runs there. He did stay in the game for a bit. Uh, but things can tend to unravel when you go up against Lazy. You know, he's so good at setting the table for himself, driving those runs in and uh, in those big RBI scenarios. So that's what it is. It's going to be catching up to the heat for Weaver and uh, no big innings uh, tonight. Uh, as, you know, both these teams can show that they're they're in it to win it. Uh, Weaver could easily extend the series just as easily as Lazy could win it. And uh, these are going to be big pair of games coming up. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't be surprised either way. Absolutely. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Let the players know it's time to challenge and bring you game three of the XBL World Series. All right, everyone, here we go. Loading into Sakura Hills for game three of the XBL World Series. We were proposed the away team, Lazy the home team here, got the home field advantage and the advantage in the series up 2-0. Tall task for Weaver, but uh, if there's anyone who's up to it, it's it's this guy. He's been as hot as anybody the last season or two. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to see Ganon Weeks here leading off against Daydream Lullaby. She's mostly Velo, pretty even on the junk and accuracy end, a five-pitch pitcher. Lazy so, uh, showed us last night he can pitch up there with the best of them. You know, Weaver being the Von Asen winner, but Lazy, known for his tight pitching stats, stats as well. Uh, really found some corners and got some good strikeouts. Counts even early to Gannon Weeks. Fouls that curveball straight back. We reset here, Daydream Lullaby. The high heat swung on a miss. There's a strikeout to start game three. 
Great pitch. Uh, yeah, Lazy underrated as a pitcher. He's really a chameleon. He can win a one nothing ball game, as he proved, and also a slugfest, so it's it's tough to beat him. Let's see now, as Ghibli Chongle takes his first at-bat, he's evened up in the count, and a nice fastball nips the corner there from Lullaby. Tenth pitch up coming of the inning, just low, so Weaver doesn't bite on the changeup. Counts even again. Ghibli sees it, rips it, foul. We're going to reset. So working the starter a little bit is Weaver here in the first. Another foul ball down the right field line. Could so he's be already at 12 pitches. He's got a... We know Lazy's got a tough bullpen here, but working the starter is never a bad thing. Bad Boa is able to gather that ground ball, hit hard over to second, uh, and send it to first quickly for out number two, and that brings up Deja Yorno to hit. These teams back in their confusing uh, uniforms as Weaver's got the away grays or, you know, almost blacks as you could call them. And then Lazy in a very similar red-ish orange and then a uh, black pattern. Good, good for the, the eyes. Jay Dizzle able to snatch the liner, ends the inning there. Uh, scoreless for the Beavers. We're going to the bottom half of the first World Series game number three. Yeah, good approach there by Weaver. Uh... Looks a little more patient than he did yesterday, so that's uh, hopefully a good sign. Mimiyoshi's first pitch of the inning is ripped right up the middle for a leadoff single. So Lazy's got some speed on the bags. Jacko Yako digging in against Caitlin Kanyasit. That one ripped to right. Boosie Manga can get underneath the liner, though, make a quick catch and retire. Yako there for the out. Brings up Amy B. 581 hitter in the playoffs. Way ahead of the changeup. It's 0-1. One pitch that's really made Lazy look bad the most consistently, in my opinion. That could be two. Ooh, it is. Four, six, or 6 4 3. Excuse me. Great double play there from Weaver to roll it and send himself to the top of the second. These two working quickly. Surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a low to mid scoring game like in the three to four, three to five range. These guys are both excellent pitchers, especially on 93 ego. Yeah, absolutely. Pain in the corners with what looks like ease. Uh, we see a hard hit ball though from Barl Sharkley. She sends it into the right center field gap, but her speed only prevents her from getting a second base. She's got herself a single. Boosie Manga at the plate. Boosie Manga really wants to get things started. He hasn't quite had the World Series he's hoped for just yet. Not yet, but he's uh, he's in the, what, five spot for a reason, so I, I expect to see him do some damage before the series is over. Yeah, ton of power, ton of speed. He rips that one through left field, or through the gap into left field, and we got two on here and no outs in the second for the Beaver, so good chance to maybe get something started. Simon Bombaclat digs in for his first AB, looking for a strike to hit against Daily Dream All by her 24th pitch, nips the corner, good curveball. More good approach by Weaver here. He's being patient, hitting everything pretty hard so far. Bomb flat hit that one. Right into the left uh, left field gap. Apple Bomb does cut it off, but a run will score. Runners at first and third for the Beavers, and they break this one open. one nothing. A great start to inning number two here. Nobody out still, keep in mind, so uh, a chance to really put up a crooked number here. Yeah, Weaver wants to get it started, keep it... Passing the baton, Jeffrey Fromey is at the plate, the center fielder. Sees himself ahead in the count quickly. Lullaby needing to find some location. There's a strike, and it's 2-1. This one could be through the right side. It is right where it needs to be. Fromey gets the single. Run comes in, two on still, and no outs for the Beavers. 2-0 in the second inning. Wow, yeah, that's a definition of a seeing-eye single. You know, a little unlucky for Lazy, but that's why you put the ball in play. Sometimes good things happen. Nong Chias Nornsby is at the plate. He can hit. He's got good stats, good contact especially, so going to look to put bat to ball, keep these runners moving. He's ahead 3-0 in the count. Lazy might end up walking if he gets a strike in there. 3-1. 3-1 pitch ripped. Will be foul, so it's full count. Still no outs in the inning. Beavers working off, I believe, four hits so far. Nong Chias Nornsby rips that changeup foul. We're going to do it all over again. Nornsby hits that one hard. Applebaum dies for it. He can't catch it. It's off his body. That should score a run for Weaver. 
Everyone's going to head into scoring position as well. Second and third, no outs, 3 nothing now. Yeah, this is a dream start. Two runners in scoring position, still nobody out. You just let the pitcher hit here and try to hit a little dribbler, drive one, or, uh, yeah, drive one in. Um, Ooh, she pops that. one up. Yeah, it's not exactly what Weaver was looking for. Weak contact behind shortstop. Jay Dizzle's making the grab. Runners remain where they are, but the lineup does turn over for Gannon Weeks, who can hit. Yeah, still in great shape here. He just needs another good at bat or two, and he's really going to put up a, a great second inning. Weeks hits Should that one hard. One. Jacko Yakko catches it. Should be a sack fly. There's not a lot of speed coming from third, it looked like, for a second there, but it was, I believe, the center fielder from me, but it was a closer play than maybe I, I believed it would be to start. Rondo score either way. We've got... 4 nothing Beavers keep adding to the total. Yeah, looking at the replay, it looks like that would have been pretty close. I think Weaver would have beat it, but uh, good job keeping the runner at second there. Ghibli Chongle pops it up. Amy B is in foul territory. She should be able to grab it. She does. That ends the inning, but the Beavers do score four. Good second inning for Weaver. Let's see if he can hold it now against the meat of this Blackbirds order, getting their first chance to hit in this ballgame. Yeah, no, like I said, dream inning, so he's in great position. You need to go put up a zero uh, to respond and keep all the momentum. Strike in there from Caitlin, can you sit? But behind in the count now is Weaver's 3-1. Lazy looking for a pitch to hit. He gets it. He hits it hard to right. Boosie Maga smack, or snags it out of the air. Sometimes you just hit it too hard. Just stayed on a line for the right fielder. Pretty easy play. Lazy hits the next pitch as well, pretty all in the nose, but goes right into center where Fromi can't catch it. Going to be a single for Baboa. Baboa's got okay speed at first as well, so you got to watch out for that. Kid K. There he goes, Baboa. Just wow. as I speak, he gets a great jump. Just a perfect jump. Not even worth a throw there. This is in tag-up territory for Lazy if Weaver catches it. He opts to let it go foul. Now he's going to pitch to Kid K again. Runner does go. It's another good jump throw down there. Not in time. Wow. It's a little unusual from Lazy. Not usually known for his run, uh, base running. He does swing at that one and miss. The changeup again gets him swinging. Runners at third. Needs a hit with two outs to get the run across. But yeah, Lazy playing a bit of small ball tactic. It looks like maybe just... Steal, and he does get the hit up the middle. Run's going to score only from only 90 feet away. So the steals do help the cause. First run of the game for the Blackbirds here. And Lazy really is just one of the most frustrating hitters to face. He just, you never seem to put him away when you really need to. There's another hit as we speak for Lazy as the lineup just turned over. Or no, it did not. That was the eight hole hitter. Excuse me. Now the pitcher Daydream Lullaby bats. Just foul on that one. She's looking to help herself. Sees the ball outside. It's 1-1. Pitch to Lullabies, hit on the ground. Yorno picks it up. It's short, throws it to first in time. There's the out. We go to the top of the third. It's a 4-1 ball game. you got to think, Mike, where you are going to see some more scoring. I definitely think so. These pitchers, uh, you know, I think they're the, what, the number three? And actually, is this Lazy's number two? I believe this is his number three. He did pitch, okay. he pitched a low velo pitcher last game. So arguably, you know, however you want to style that. He has different arsenals in the in the rotation to use regardless. Gotcha, gotcha. This one, the high below specialist, Daydream Lullaby, gets a strikeout there, but she's been knocked around early. She's given up four runs, her 49th pitches inside to Barl Sharkley. A yeah, good velo, but pretty low accuracy, which is, I think, why Weaver is catching up to a lot of these. They're not dotted like we were seeing yesterday. That one was. Great pitch by Lazy. That one, looking strikeout, great pitch from uh, Lazy there. Painting the corner. And Busi Maga going to hit with two outs. He rips the first pitch, a changeup right up the middle. Jacko Yako can only pick it up, send it into second base. Good single. Yeah, we talked about him struggling in the World Series thus far, but uh, he seems to be turning it around here in Game 3. Second hit already, and he's off. He's got a good jump himself. We see a lot of stealing in this game. Mojo goes up as well for Busi Maga. He's feeling it out there. Bumaclat looking to do some more damage. He got things started last time, but he can only fly out to Apple Bum here to end the third. We're going to the bottom half, 4-1. Yeah, and a good enough inning there by Lazy to hold it where it is, trying to recapture the momentum. That's going to fall, I think. 
It does fall right in front of the sliding Boosie Manga. It's a good single. For Lazy to set the table for Jacko Yako. His lineup just has turned over. So the two hole hitter at the plate. I had in the count as well. Good pitch from Weaver in there for a strike. Not a lot you can do with that up and in. No. Oof, that one too. Unhittable. Yeah. Hitting triple digits. Runner goes, gets the looking strikeout. Another great jump. We see the mojo go up to Apple Bum out there. But these two are just running all over the base paths. Maybe no names someone's dugout, you know, goading all these runners to go. But we see the steal not work out for Lazy there. Runners caught off the bag, and there's a line out double play. Yeah, it seemed like he got a really bad jump on getting back to second there. It seemed like it was a pretty obvious catch, but yeah, just maybe he didn't see it that way. Jeffrey Fermi leading off. Daydream Lullaby is still tiring, but in the game, in this fourth or 58th pitch, in there, nips the corner. Good pitch. Lazy going with the sequence of the changeup next. This one hit hard on the ground. Ooh, just off the ground, actually, caught by Baboa on the line out. There's an out in this inning for Nongchias Nornsby. Nornsby behind the fastball. We were used to be more of a small ball guy and stealer, but we don't see it as much anymore with his improved hitting. So different to see both these guys running so much as that's a nice strikeout by Lazy. Yeah, this game three pivotal, you know, to to plot the course of this series. Weaver needs to do everything he can to avoid going down 3-0 in a series, you know, how difficult that can be. Almost cursed to try and come back from. And, you know, Lazy really wants to remain in the driver's seat. You know, you don't want to let this get out of control and swing any momentum towards Weaver's favor, let him back into this. Oh, absolutely. You keep it where it is. You want to keep that little bit of doubt in Weaver's head uh, to keep it close. And, yeah, you want to keep the momentum as, uh, as close to your side as you can. That one's hit on the ground to third base. Kid K chucks it to first in time. We end the top of the fourth. No runs there for the Beavers. Jackie Stacky at the plate against Caitlin Canyon Sid. His second at bat begins one and one. He's got a ton of power. No home runs, though, really, in these playoffs. It's that one hard to write. Boosie Mange able to grab it for an out. Lots of liners from Lazy. It's this the curse one. Of being such a good hitter. He gets underneath it pretty good, but Gannon Weeks can go to the warning track. He makes the grab two outs here. Yeah, that is true. Sometimes maybe too accurate to the ball with the reticle lazy hitting a lot of these on the nose. Behind the heat there with Kid K. He's 0-2 quickly. Can you see it's change up? Stared at. It's 1-2. This one, soft contact to center. Fromey gets underneath. Makes that catch. Fourth ends quickly. We go to the top of the fifth. Gannon Weeks starts us off against the Daydream Lullaby still in the game. Yeah, and Weaver's pitcher uh, has noticeably 25 less pitches right now, so Lazy's been very, very aggressive up there. Yeah, maybe trying to find a way to get back into this game. 93 Ego showing its head, making it a little bit tougher on these players to, to get anything going besides that, that bit of a rally we saw from Weaver earlier in the second. Ghibli Chongle at the plate. 70th pitch upcoming, hit hard on the ground. Kid K takes it herself, though. There's two outs. DeGiorno hits that one hard. That's into the right center field gap. Jacko Yako can cut it off, leave it at a single. But that is decent speed. Good hit there for Weaver with two outs, trying to extend his lead. We'll see if the runner gets going here just to try, uh, try to create a base or a runner in scoring position situation, scoring situation, if you will. Not too so far. That's two quick strikes, too, as well. Bar Sharkley goes right back after. Strike three, swinging up and in. Can't catch up. We end the fifth. Go to the bottom half. Wacky Wanda leads off here. 7, 8, and 9 for the Blackbirds. Can you see it's only got 43 pitches? 44th pitch hit hard. It's past the diving or no. That'll be a leadoff single. A great start for Lazy here as he continues to hit the ball hard. That one actually finding a gap, so good on him. Yeah, you never know how quickly things can turn on your head when you're playing against Lazy, so Weaver needs to... Keep things under control. He's behind in the count to Jay Dizzle, the eight-hole hitter, though. Dizzle swings and miss. It's 2-1. Another one foul back. Count gets evened up. Big moment here. Whiffer's engaged. 
Strike three, looking right at it. Great pitch from Weaver. Perfect. Yeah, it doesn't get much better. Even if you swing at it, you're not going to do much. Nipped the lower inside corner. Yeah, not, absolutely nothing you can really do. That one ripped right up the middle by the pinch hitter from Lazy. So with one out, he's got two runners on. All of a sudden, he could possibly tie this in one swing. Apple Bum's locked in. Just the player that maybe you'd want to do it. Yeah, this is the guy you want for sure. Way ahead of the changeup. It's one and one. Changeup gets him again. Lazy needs to stay back on that pitch. Great job from Weaver to get him swinging a couple times here. Counts evened up though. Yeah, the changeup, just the 93 ego, the changeup is so much slower, and the fastball, you almost got to cheat to get to it, so I totally get it. Uh oh. And he's picked off, stealing third. Lazy throws a runner away. This one hit to the right side. Noinsby picks it up. There's the first in time, and all of a sudden, the inning is over. It was a good opportunity for Lazy to get back into this, but a caught stealing and a ground out in succession bring us to the top of the sixth, where Boosie Mango leads off against I Tiger. Yeah, that threat, it was looking dangerous, and it was quelled uh, just as quick as it started. Not, not good if you're a Blackbirds fan. Swing under that one. It's one and two to Boosie Manga. He's locked in in this game. Sorry, Rich, strike three. 99 miles an hour up. Manga swings at it, misses. Tough luck there yeah, for Weaver. Very tough luck, and still some great pitching uh, from Lazy. Aside from that second inning, that tough second inning, he's really looked great. That is true. He needs to get his bats going as I Tigers out up ahead in the count here. His pitching starting to hold. He's got his big bullpen in. This one, though, blooped. Baboa dives for it just over his glove. Yeah, it looked like there was a chance he would catch it, but really tough play. So a good single there from Weaver with one out puts a runner on. Much speed, but still, you could see him go if you think the the pitcher is getting into too much of a a pattern. Good job changing up the cadence a bit. Oh, too quickly to throw me. High heat incoming. This one hit hard on the ground. Jay Dizzle can't catch it. It'll be a single from Weaver. Ooh, he almost went to third there with Bumble Clap, but decided to turn back. But there's and that two was such on. a weird, such a weird dive animation. It looked like he just didn't really dive very far or far at all there. I wonder what his fielding is. Yeah, maybe low fielding. Maybe a bit late, too, on the, uh, you know, using the sticker, pulling the trigger. Whichever preference of, of diving you may use, you know. There are multiple, as we have learned in the past that not everybody knows. That is very true. I didn't know you could dive with anything but the uh, stick, as a but, stick user. And as a, But as a stick user as well, I didn't know you could dive with anything besides the buttons. I didn't oh. know you could dive with the stick. I know it's you learn something new every day about people. As uh, we see, Weaver score two runs here, and get himself to second with a uh, hustle double, bottom of his order, putting in for some productions. It's six one here for the Beavers. Big five run lead. Yeah, just an extremely clutch two out hit there. Badly needed to get some momentum back his way. He's in the lead, but you want to put Lazy away when you get the chance. Gannon weeks ahead in the count. Big moment. Hits it hard. Apple bomb can catch it. Good grab. Ends the inning, but the Beavers do score two. Bottom yeah, six. I mean, there's, the way Weaver's pitching, his pitching to my eye looks like it's even maybe a half tier above what it was last night. He just looks very sharp up there. Uh, and he should be. It's, it's a desperate situation. Yeah, trying to stay in this series, like we said, desperately not trying to go 3-0. 3-0 uh, down, because that is, you know, never bodes well. 14, this one hit hard on the ground to second. Nornsby picks it up, chucks it to first in time. Looking good now is Weaver, though. He's got John Gabbana in the middle innings here, coming out of the pen. Probably going to go with Gabbana, then probably. Gabbana having some issues in the last game, getting roughed up late. Gives up a single here with one out. That's a great piece of hitting by Lazy. That pitch was absolutely perfect in the uh, upper outside corner. That one wasn't so perfect. Yeah, that one is ripped. One hops the wall. Should be a run for Lazy, scoring from first. Gets himself a sliding double. It's six to two. Yeah, right into the wheelhouse, that low inside fastball, very hittable. 
That one lifted lazily. Not going to do anything. Yeah, some weak contact there. Keeps the runner at second base. Oof. Kid K at the plate. Swings at that one. Just misses this one, though. Hit to the right side. Lazy thinking about scoring, but going to keep the runner at third. No diddle as well. He, he definitely thought about it. You could hear the, the base running. <laughs> You sure could. I think if he went for it there, he was a dead duck. He would have been out by a mile, so good decision. Ooh, this one popped up in foul territory. Big chance for Weaver to end the inning. Ball sharply gets underneath it, catches it, and we go to the top of the seventh. Four-run lead still intact. Lazy does get one. And it could prove to be very important. You're chipping away on these egos. You're not always going to have the crooked numbers, but you gotta you got to get them when you can take them, so one better than zero. This one hit on the ground, or no, just caught out of the air by Kid K. It looked like it was going to hit the ground, but first baseman charges it. We got Deja Yorno at the plate. Weaver got to think about uh, continuing to pile it on here. Uh, if I'm him, I want as many as I can take. I'm not settling on a four-run lead. 2-1 to Deja. In there for a strike. Whiffer does engage. I, Tiger... Starting to tire out. His 27th pitch is fouled over. Wacky Wanda makes the grab. Almost overran that one, Dwayne. Looked like on my screen, at least. Yeah, she could have almost missed that. Don't want to give either of these hitters another free swing, as we saw in the games yesterday. This one popped up. That'll end the inning. So we're going to the bottom of the sixth. Both teams even on 10 hits. Beavers do have six runs, though runs the difference yeah he's been able to kind of put his hits uh in uh, two or three innings whereas lazy spread them out some more so he hasn't really had those lazy like rallies we're used to got to get a pinch hitter here yep ham Choi coming in known for the power in the past is ham Choi, but coming off the bench some power more contact and no speed really this season 1-0 pitch ripped. Boosie Maga makes the grab. There are so two many outs. Adam balls. Yeah, Lazy on the nose so far in game three, but it has done him no favors. He has scored two runs, but hits that one hard as well. It's on the ground, and Nornsby picks it up, throws it to uh, first in time, ends the seventh. So we were six outs away from getting back into this, hopefully, for him. It's got yes, some indeed. It's good. I mean, four runs, or yeah, four runs in. This late stage of the game on 93 Ego, it's no tall task. Or it's no easy task, I'm sorry. Especially against a Von Aysen winner. Yeah, no big innings being a big key here. And he's prevented Lazy so far from having any of that. Busi Manga. Behind the fastball, swings and misses. One out here in this eighth. Simon Bumbaclat. He's going to get a first pitch change up. Looks at it outside. We do have Pack a Punch who came out of the pen as well to relieve I Tiger. The righty. Tons of velo as well on this pitcher, but quickly behind 3 0 to uh, Bumbleclot. Walk prone engages that pitch hit into left field. Apple Bum picks it up right off the ground, it looks like. Ends up being a catch. Yeah, I thought he had to dive to get there, but uh, great job by Lazy reading the ball and uh, knowing he had just enough ground to cover it. There's a no one pitch to Fromey, and then it is a curveball that nips the up outside corner. Coming back with the heat, swing and a miss, strike three. Triple digits, Weaver can't catch up. We go to the bottom of the eighth. He's having issues with his high velo uh, later as the game goes on for some reason. Lacey rips another one, cheese. Yeah, Lazy on the nose again. Can't quite get a hit. Amy B's coming up, three number three hitter. If you're Weaver, you'll take those all day long. It doesn't matter how hard you hit it if it's an out. But Lazy very early on that hits it sideways. Oof. Weaver misses a spot there. You'd have to think behind three one on the count. John Gabbana resets this one fouled away. A bit of a dangerous pitch there. That was pretty hittable. 3-2 pitch with one out. Hit up the middle. Deja Uno dives for it. There's speed going to first. Beats it to the bag. Infield hit for Lazy. Yeah, great play by Weaver, but the speed just too much. Really no chance once you leave your feet against a speedster like that. 
Here's Jackie Stacky, big moment for the cleanup hitter. Let's see if he can get a hit for the Blackbirds. Lazy, maybe thinking about stealing. We've seen him go quite a few times in this game, but this one hit through the right side. It's off the glove of the diving uh, Barls Charkley. She can take it herself to first. So runner gets into scoring position, but there's two outs for and Baboa needs a hit to get her in. Great jump there by Weaver too, just to knock that down and take the out. That easily, most players aren't going to get to that uh, and react in time, but that that's potentially huge, making it two outs. John Prawley's out of the pen. His 1-1 pitch is ripped. Fromey jumps, makes the catch <laughs> on the run in the air. What a grab. That saves a run, possibly more. We're going to the ninth. Yeah, it's just seeming like it might not be meant to be for Lazy this game. He's just not catching many breaks, and what a heck of a play by Fromey. Yeah, it's looking like all Weaver in this game three. We'll see if he's able to finish the job. He's got a chance to hit and add some insurance. And then he needs three more outs to put himself right back into this series and extend it at least another night. That is very true. As a fan, I kind of selfishly hope we do get more baseball, but uh, I'm sure Lazy doesn't think so. This one to probably 0 2 fouled away. We reset. Quick fastball gets him looking. Nice pitch from Lazy. Great pitch there. We've seen Weaver hit that spot a few times, and it's just it's so low, it doesn't look like a strike, and there's just nothing you can do with it. We have Ganon Weeks at the plate. 0 1 ripped. Jacko Yako makes the grab. We're going to the bottom of the ninth. Kid K is going to bat here. 6 7 8 for the Blackbirds. Down four. Still trying to get. Stay in the driver's seat in this series. Put it to 3 0. But it looks like they have to face Prowley. going to be tough. If there ever was a time to slice and dice, now it is. Not a good start. Ah, Kid K. K's herself. Misses that. And we have one out. Wacky Wanda at the dish ahead of the changeup. Next pitch lifted to center. Fromey can get underneath it. He does. There is two outs in this inning. So only one more out in the game. Jay Dizzle at the plate. Ooh. That looked pretty good. This one ripped. Fromey slides for it. Can't get there. It will be a single. So a two out hit for the Blackbirds. Game not yeah, just over yet. Not yet. I don't blame Weaver for diving there. Pretty low chance you get to it, but you're up four. He might as well try to end the game. It's actually closer than I thought. Bibi Babuski, the pinch hitter, hits it hard. Deep to right. Will it stay fair? It is just oh. foul. Man, it is a game of inches, as they say, and just the uh, the inches have not been going Lazy's way in this game three. 2-2 two -two pitch now, upcoming from Prowley. Big moment. Get some looking. But That's it. Weaver... And the Beavers take game three. Fantastic pitching by Weaver, I have to say. Like, he, he gave up some hard contact, but when you're putting the ball in good spots, hard contact a lot of times isn't going to result in much. So he was consistent inning one through nine, gave up a couple runs. You're going to you're not going to hold lazy to nothing, hardly ever. But uh, fantastic pitching by Weaver, and he scored enough to get the job done. Yeah, that's your Von Ace and Winter coming out there and, you know, slicing and dicing on lazy. And uh, getting it done, you know, putting up the big inning himself early to, and then really riding that through throughout for the victory. So good job from Weaver. Uh, in game three, to jump right back into the series, the World Series is now guaranteed at least five games. So we love to see that here in the XBL. And uh, looks like we're getting set up for a pretty exciting game four, wouldn't you say, Mike? Very exciting. Very exciting. I, I, I can't wait. We'll see. We'll see if some of these hard contacts, uh, they kind of went Weaver's way the first game. We'll see if some of those kind of fall for Lazy the second game. Uh, or if Weaver can keep up his just phenomenal pitching. Yeah, we'll see if luck turns Lazy's way. Game four coming at you in just a few moments. We'll be right back after a short break. Folks, all right, folks, here we go. We're loading in now to Red Rock Park. Game four, the XBL World Series. Weaver just took game three, six to two. We're getting right back at it. Ombre Dolos Rojos on the mound. 
great ballpark here. Uh, a lot of spunk in Red Rock. I think the Cooch Potatoes were rumored to almost play here at one point. Ah, the Cooch Potato Nation. Rumored to be making an appearance in the XPL Cup and possibly in the upcoming Season 13. I heard that. That's exciting. Yeah, you heard it here first on the XPL World Series cast. Amy B at the plate, leading off here, fouls it away, 2-2 count, hit on the ground, Bombaclad picks it up, gets it first in time. We see Jacko Yako at the plate. We saw a lot more runs scored here in game two last night, 8-4 was the score line, 12 scored in total. We'll see if that's the case as well, these players both liking to hit in Red Rock Park. They do, and I'm very... Ooh, wow, that was smashed again. Very curious to see how Lazy does against the low velo here. I think that's going to make the changeup, obviously, less effective. That's the pitch that really gave him trouble in Game 3. Hombre de los Rojas, an interesting build as well. Five-pitch pitcher containing the screwball, but low velo. Uh, got okay junk, okay accuracy, so Weaver's number four. Needing to get the job done, he walks. Lazy on four pitches there, though, with two outs. Brings up Jackie Stacky in a moment where... Uh, he could possibly do some damage should he get a pitch to hit. He certainly can. Oh, geez. Not if you do this, though. Yeah, Lazy's picked off. Weaver does not throw it, just charges the runner, gets him on the tag, and we end the first. So Lazy's continuing to try to steal bags, but got caught there. It's very unusual. I've never seen Lazy even attempt to steal this much, so I wonder if there was something he noticed uh, in yesterday's cast. We were getting too predictable or something. It, it's worked out some. It hasn't worked out uh, the last two times, I think. Yeah, and you know, those stolen bases not really getting converted last game to runs. We'll see if he can make a difference. And back up Yose Yish on the hill. That'll be a leadoff single from Gannon Weeks here. Home team's got a runner on first to start us out. A lot of speed, good start for Weaver. And again, same thing to him, this low velo. These guys are good enough to, even on 93 Ego, this low velo is going to make a lot of difference. Ghibli Chongle has great stats, low speed, the catcher, inside pitch. One misses low, or in there for a strike low, excuse me. Two one pitch, getting ready to come to him. It is ripped into right in front of Amy B, it will be a single. So two runners on to start the game. Beavers continuing to hit as, as they did in game three, it looks like so far. Yeah, that's as hard as you can hit a baseball right there. That uh, that was scorched. Dejournaud's at the dish. Big moment for her. Big power hitter. Power versus lefties also engaged against Yeesh. 1-1 one, one pitch upcoming. Change up. Lifted. Jacko Yako gets underneath it. Makes the grab. Weaver does not tag up. Really good job there by Lazy making the pitch he needed to to get the soft contact and not let these runners advance. If they advance there, you're all but certainly going to give up at least one. Still have a chance here. It is Barl Charkley ready to hit. Big chance for her. She's had a great World Series getting on base. Change up, or excuse me, curveball in there. Top of the zone. Lazy going back there for it, but he does miss. He threw a lot of those in games one and two, which was kind of surprising to me. Um, it doesn't strike me as a pitch Weaver would struggle with, but I guess it works, so what do I know? Yeah, if you're getting out, you might as well keep going to it, right? Absolutely. Full count pitch to Charkley upcoming here. She rips it, bad boy, dives for it, makes the oh. grab, and flips it to second almost <laughs> in time. I thought that he was out there. I did, too. I, if I was putting money on it, I would have thought he was out by, not a mile, but... Uh, a good enough amount, but apparently not, so Weaver's still alive. Two outs. Runner's still on. Boosie Maga really wanting to convert here ahead in the count. 3-0 pitch upcoming. It's going to be a curveball here from Lazy. Let's see if it hits the zone. It does. Big 3-1 pitch. In there for a strike. That one could have went anywhere. Yeah, that looked low. Runners go. It's over the glove of the jumping shortstop. That will score one. Boosie Maga is going to get in with a double as well. So one nothing Beavers. Runners in scoring position. Simon Bombacloud coming up here in the first. Man, I know it's Weaver that did it, but that is just such a lazy type of way to score. You know, you make a good pitch, you get weak contact, but it just falls in there and you give up the, the go-ahead run. It's so backbreaking. Great job by Weaver. Yeah, beating him at his own game a little bit out here tonight. As it stands, those runners are looking good in scoring position. A hit from Bomacock can get them in. 
2 2 count coming up. It is that curveball again. Hit hard. Baboa picks it up. There's the first in time. So the Beavers score one in the first. We're going to the top half of the second. Jackie Stacky leads us off. Yeah, and I think all things considered, if you're lazy, giving up one isn't a huge deal. There was two on, nobody out, but uh, it would have been even sweeter to get out of it with no damage. This one hit on a line over to Nornsby. He makes that grab for the first out here in the second. Baboa gets his first AB of the game. Quickly down two strikes to Ombre de los Rojos. Yeah, and a big strike three swinging. Sits yeah, him right my down. prediction completely wrong here. Lazy not looking comfortable at all with the slow velo. Another weak piece of hitting, uh, or another weak ball hitting play. Yeah, he hasn't looked good at the ball against Ombre in the first two innings. Yeah, you'd expect maybe the change in velo, something he could work with, but he's still got to adjust as we're... Working through here, six outs done. We're in the bottom of the second. Jeffrey Fromey has had a good series, has had a good playoffs. Batting 383 for, you know, a hitter of his stature. Even in the count right now. 2-2 Two -two is lifted into foul territory. Amy B dives for it, makes the grab. What a play. Beautiful dive there. It looked like she kind of took a weird route in the beginning, but uh, timed it perfectly. Great uh, great piece of fielding. Yeah, very nicely done from Amy B. It does take a lot of timing, especially up here, you know, up against the best in a, you know, a moment when the World Series, you know, nonetheless, you want to be sure you just get to the ball and get as many outs as you can as cleanly as possible. Self a chance, and he sure did that. Ooh, good pitch, but spoiled. Yeah, Nornsby's ahead... Or behind, excuse me, in the count. Now it's evened up. Yeesh, her 39th pitch upcoming. It's a great fastball. Swung on a miss. Strike three. Weaver can't touch it. Yeah. 93 miles an hour. Not not exactly blazing, but you put it in a perfect spot. It's still tough to get to. Lazy alternating high and low velo as well tonight. Same thing he did last night in games one and two. 42nd pitch hit on a line by Boa makes the grab that ends the second still one nothing here Weavers Beavers but game very very close Rojo he's locked in it lazy's uh command and accuracy look way better this game to me maybe he was taking the velo for granted last game or maybe the accuracy is just better on this pitcher Ooh, nice play great play Nornsby with the timing makes the diving effort and the throw in time to first puts away the uh I believe Kid K it is Jay Dizzle who down bats first pitch swing and listed to right. There's two outs in this third. He's swung at about four of those slow curveballs, and all of them have looked like this, just a weak little pop. Yeah, another one popped up. That was Yosai Yish at the plate, ends the inning for Lazy, so we're going to the bottom half of the third. Lineup turns over for Weaver here again in weeks. Back at it again. He crushes it deep to right. That wall, wall is short. It's off the glove of the diving Amy B. Weeks into second with a double standing up. Man, Lazy did everything he possibly could to get there. He he dove and he he got to the ball, but it's just such a tough catch. It was full extension. Uh, and really, Weaver deserved the hit for hitting it as well as he did. Ghibli Chongle ahead in the count. Now it's evened up. 1-1 one, one pitch. Hit to the right side. Kid K can't do anything with it. Weeks will get himself to third. Remains there. It's first and third with no outs for the Beavers. Nice piece of hitting. That was that high curveball I spoke of. And didn't hit it hard, but hit it in the right spot. Come on, one pitch. Now reset for Deji or no. Batting 400 in these playoffs. Behind in the count now, Lazy. This one ripped to right. Damn. Could have been a big danger from Weaver, but it is just fouled away. Full count pitch upcoming, fouled away once again. He's looked yeah, like a that pitch. pitch. It did. That other pitch, uh, two before that one, I think, could have been catastrophic. Weaver missed it by about three feet. Uh, fastball up in the zone at 93. Well, it's that another one hard one. up the middle. It's going to get a single. Gets the job done. Pushes the lead to two to nothing. 
And again, this is usually what we see Lazy do. There's nobody out. It's just one after another, station to station. It, it's so so much pressure to pitch when somebody's just rallying like this. You should have 56 pitches now, 57 upcoming. You have to wonder when the bullpen might get involved here. Swing and a miss, strike three gets the first out of the inning. Charlie can't catch up to the changeup. Or Charkley, excuse me. Yeah, Lazy desperately needed that as Charkley uh, goes down swinging, but he needs really a double play ball is what he needs right here. Two on for Boosie Manga. Yeah, quickly three mm. balls to him. That one popped straight back. Weaver might have just missed it. It's a full count pitch upcoming. 3-2 hit hard up the middle. Will at least load the bases. Weaver's not going to test the arm of the center fielder. So bases juiced. One out. Simon Bamaklat at the plate. Yeah, with Simon up, the way he's seeing the ball right now, I don't blame him. Why, why give a potentially free out here? Weaver looking very, very sharp here against the slow velo. Bumbleclat down a uh, one. He hits that one hard into right. That'll be a single. Everybody station to station. Another run tacked on for Weaver's Beavers. That's what I'm saying. It's what the sixth or seventh batter, and he's got one out. It's just single after single after single. It's it's so frustrating when it happens to you. But Lazy's got to bear down and get some outs right now. Great strike there. Drops the curveball in on Fromey. This one, though, ripped down the right field line. It's fair. It's going to score at least two. The speed on Fromey is going to get him extra bases. Runner remains at third. It's 5 nothing. Weavers Beavers. I think you got to go to the pen. It's just it's not fooling him at all. Uh, it's not working, and it's still gettable at 5 nothing. It's not looking great, but he, apparently he's going to leave her in. Yeah, this could add up fast for Lazy. If, he, if he's not careful, this one popped up. Jacko Yako can make the grab. It will be a sack fly, it looks like. Beavers score another 6 0. And maybe the pitcher spot is coming up for Lazy. I'm not sure. But uh, to me, in the World Series, you, you pull them as soon as they get in trouble. Or at least this bad of trouble. It's it's not looking good for Ms. Uh, Yeesh. Yeesh, indeed. 6 0 lead to work with. And uh, Ombre de los Rojas at the plate. He's locked in. Can't find a strike to him. Now it's 2 2. That pitch hit up the middle. Nobody can wow. get there. It's an RBI single for Ombre de los Rojos. Hey, if those are going to fall with your pitcher, it just might be your night. But, I mean, it's it's not all luck by any stretch. He's being so much more patient and selective tonight. He's swinging at good pitches, uh, but it's paying off for him, obviously. That one crushed deep to left. See you later. Gannon Weeks just made this a 9-0 game in the third. Wow, we're, uh, in the, we've only seen Lazy get the M-word done to him what once i think uh but we're we're getting very scarily close to uh the magic m word yeah big dangerous territory lazy just wanted to keep this game going let alone get out of this inning there are two outs ghibli chongle hits it hard it's up the middle jay dizzle can't pick it up he's on base winning run at the or yeah on first we were trying to jump back into the series in serious fashion tonight. That one is crushed. Applebum has to catch it. It's gone. Weavers Beavers win game three in three oh innings. Oh my gosh. I didn't think that had a chance off the bat. I thought it was going to be a hit, but I thought it was going to be like a double off the wall or the track, but it just kept going. Just perfect backspin on it, apparently, right over the wall, and this game is over before we can even know what's going on. What an offensive explosion. From the Beavers. Wow, I can't even keep up with the graphic here. Give me one second to get yeah, myself my set up. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, I'm catching my breath, too. I can't believe what I just saw. We, we started a little bit late, but we're going to end on time because of the quick three-run mercy. Or I'm sorry, three-inning mercy. Unbelievable. Yeah, what a shot there from Weaver to end it as well. Two big homers in those crucial moments as soon as he really got a handle on that inning. Uh and we see him walk away with two victories tonight. And um, yeah, it was it was in a fashion that we were not quite expecting, I would say. No, he outscored him what sixteen to two? Is that what was it six to two the first game, I think? Yeah, yeah six, six to, pretty much. 
I believe six to two, and then we had a yeah, no, the uh, eleven to or ten to nothing, eleven to nothing. Mercy, yeah, walk off home run, two run home run. So, so seventeen two, even better. Yeah, just uh, kind of dominated. We're not used to seeing lazy of all people get uh, dominated like that, but Weaver showed up a different player tonight, and uh, I thought lazy needed to go to the bullpen earlier, but obviously the pitcher he uh, brought in didn't fare much better. So Weaver was just on one tonight. Yeah, so congratulations to him jumping back into the series with a, in serious fashion. You know that was. That was impressive stuff on both the mound and at the plate to get it done. And that's what it takes to be in a World Series against a player against Lazy and to uh, put him back into, uh, you know, basically, essentially, right at the beginning. It's, what, a best of three now. So, Yeah, it's uh, a best of three. If you're lazy, you're disappointed. You let him back into it. You gave hope. But Weaver did what he had to do. He wasn't messing around tonight. We've, we've got a whole new series, boys. Yeah, seriously. And like Mike said, we're going to end up ending on time here now, even though we had a bit of a slight delay that last game. Just three innings, but... uh. It was exciting to be here with you again tonight, Mike, back in the booth. Great to have you. Yeah, glad to be back. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, hope everyone enjoyed. It was entertaining to me, so I can't see why you wouldn't. But yeah. yeah, looking forward to the conclusion. Absolutely. We will have the conclusion coming up for you guys. I believe they're booked up for, uh, I believe, tomorrow is Friday and Saturday. So we will have, I think, hopefully Sunday or Monday, games continuing for you to uh Finish up the XBL World Series, the XBL Cup coming up as well starting this weekend. Uh, we'll be starting May 1st. Groups are coming out Saturday night. So get excited for that as well if you are participating in that. If you haven't already heard about that, go check out League News. And if you've been you know, with us for an XBL season in the past, you're welcome to join that as well. So thank you again to Mike in the booth. Shout out to all you guys out there who watched tonight. Shout out to Urban for coming through. Good to see you again. We'll hit you up. Maybe we can get some promos for these next games. Uh, you know, we were we were happy to have them for the semifinals. So, uh, yeah, shout out to everybody who made it happen. And we will see you guys next time. Have a safe and pleasant evening, everyone. See you guys.